This video will explain beyond goldfish memory, long-term open domain conversation, a key part of the Blenderbot 2.0 open source chatbot from Facebook AI. The authors begin by motivating this problem of long context conversations. Speaking partners learn about each other's interests and discuss the things that they've learned from past sessions. A successfully deployed bot will engage in many conversations over a length of time, as capturing organic user interest will garner continual re-engagement from returning users. So it's really interesting to think about these intelligent assistants, chatbots, that continue to learn about the user and learn from the past conversations and use this kind of information to customize the dialogue response for future conversations. This is a significantly different idea from previous work on building these chatbot, dialogue system, conversational agent data sets. The new idea here is having sessions per episode. So now what we're going to be doing is uh, we have a chat session, then we wait for a fixed amount of hours or days, and then return to the chat session so that you can kind of uh, meditate on what you've learned about the chat partner and then return to using this information in the chat. So now the data set has this kind of uh, human behavior of these long session chats and learning about the user over time built into this data set. And this isn't the biggest data set ever as this uh, pushshift.io uh, Reddit data set has more uh, utterances, and I think utterances is just how they count. Uh, the number of words in the data set, but this idea of the sessions per episode is a unique uh, property of this data set. And then we see again, each of the episodes themselves are more densely annotated with 40 and 53 utterances per episode compared to three utterances per episode. Or utterance might refer to, I might be misinterpreting, this might also mean the entire uh, sequence of the response. So this idea of multi-turn data sets where previous work has looked at between two to 15 uh, turns where you talk, I talk, that's one turn compared to, you know, these longer multi-session uh, up to say 40 or 53 uh, turns per exchanging text in the data sets. The data set that they build is named multi-session chat and the way they collect this is pretty interesting. They have these uh, crowd workers that play a role. So they have 1,155 personas rather than using your own personality for building the data set. So first you have to learn about your own persona and then you get an existing data set to learn about the other person's persona. So then you have uh, sessions two, three, and four where you select a random amount of time between chats. This could be one to seven hours or one to seven days where you then return to the chat between the workers. And then you have a separate crowd worker that's gonna write the summaries of the chat. So these summaries of the chat are, are is what's being used to train this beyond goldfish memory, long-term open domain conversation. This data set of these annotated summaries of the chats is gonna be mimicked with an abstractive summarization model. And they're gonna see how uh, having this summarization model of the chats helps the improvement on these multi-session long-term chats. The paper provides examples of these long-term chats where you can see that uh, the two uh, speakers, they'll bring up previous subjects that have been talked about, they'll go deeper, and they'll spark conversations on new topics. And you see these green uh, bars denoting six hours later, four hours later, four hours later, as they return to the conversation. And then if you really want to take apart the details of this conversation and look at figure one in the paper, returning to old topics and overall building this data set to help with the training of these long-term chatbots. With this procedure to collect data, they end up with the multi-session chat data set. And again, to clarify the terminology, an utterance refers to uh, like one line of text that you send off to the other agent when you're having uh, like a text message chat, which is the interface for these uh, chatbot data collection protocol. So in addition to the number of episodes and then the utterances in each of the, in the overall set, you also have these summaries. So these summaries are summaries of the previous amount of sessions. So uh, say we had three sessions and now we're waiting two days to talk again. Another crowd worker would write a summary of the, of the conversation that we've had. And this summary would need to retain all the important information in case we bring up some old topic in our new conversation. So we have these summaries and that's what we're going to be using to train these uh, long-term memory systems. And that's the key uh, distinction with this uh, title beyond goldfish memory and overall this data set of having these long-term conversations is interesting as we think of building relations, relationships with our AI assistants. So here are some ideas for the modeling of these uh, of this data set. So we start off with the standard encoder decoder, the MENA and BlenderBot 1.0, where you just uh, encode the context and the context is limited to say the last 128 tokens in the chat, or you could extend it to 256, 512, and 1024, and they uh, append this and then fine tune the model with this, this extended input window. So compared to these two other approaches, and these are probably the more interesting approaches. So we start off with these retrieval information retrieval models, where the approach is to return a snippet, or say utterances from the uh, previous conversation. So what you would do is you would do something like a dense passage retrieval. 
where you say have a Siamese encoder network that turns a previous utterance into a vector representation, and now you're going to try to match the similarity of the current context with all these previously encoded uh, utterances. And so the retrieval augmented generation model and the fusion in decoder, they have two different strategies of exactly how you're going to encode those return documents. And then there's a combo of the two above where uh, you use the fusion in decoder architecture, but then you update the, uh, the retrieval encoder using the RAG strategy. And then we'll get into that quickly next after this slide. So, and then compared to the summarization memory augmentation. So instead of actually retrieving the context and then prepending it and having this conditional generation strategy, you could also write this abstractive summarization model and then use that as the conditional generation. So instead of re just retrieving previous utterances, using an abstractive summarization model to write a summary of all the previous context. So the retrieval baselines compared to the abstractive summarization memory model is are the uh, fusion in decoder and retrieval augmented generation. So uh, they're both going to go and return these nearby documents and then append them to the generator. But exactly how they do them is differently. With retrieval augmented generation, we're going to have gradients go back through the similarity comparison with our document index. So we have this query encoder, Q of X, which in the case of chatbots is our context encoder. And then we're going going to put gradients to this context encoder as we're overall training the generator to match the ground truth, whether it's the ground truth summary or whether it's the ground truth uh, response for mimicking the human behavior in the data set. And the fusion in decoder is really just a different architecture for how we're taking all these different question passage, or in this case, the context utterance pairs and encoding them, concatenating these vector representations and then feeding that into the decoder. So it's really an architecture difference and the difference between whether we really train the uh, encoder model or if we kept it, keep it uh, frozen. So these retrieval augmented systems are pretty interesting where you build up these big document indexes of say a collection of previous conversations in a chatbot or scientific papers, news articles, and Wikipedia, all these kinds of ideas of building up this big information database, having vector encodings for all the documents, and then doing this kind of nearest neighbor search to return the relevant context. However, there are some interesting drawbacks of retrieval augmented generation models that may, or retrieval augmented models generally, that apply to chatbots and may apply to all these natural language processing models instead, generally, and may be better to use this memory augmentation style strategy. So the first drawback of these retrieval augmented models, is there's a lot of context to store and retrieve from, you need to build these big document indexes, it could be a headache with storage costs, and then you also need to have this inference where you compare the uh, query embedding or the context embedding, whatever it is, with this big document index. The second thing, an interesting point, is that no processing has been done on that content. So the reading, retrieving, and combining to finally generate something leaves a lot of work for the model to do. The model has to do all this heavy lifting of now looking through the Wikipedia data that it's been returned or the scientific paper, whether it's like a paragraph from it or whatever it is, is retrieving all this raw information. And now the model has to do this extra step of processing it all just to make it digestible for say later layers that do something like reasoning, combining it, and some idea like that. And this idea of having this sequential processing that manages each kind of step of transforming the input. So the solution is a memory augmentation model that summarizes the pertinent knowledge and only stores that instead. So less processing needs to be done on the summary. And then there's not as much to store and retrieve from. And it overall has less of a memory bottleneck. So putting that all together, here's the summarization memory augmentation strategy and the overall title of this paper beyond goldfish memory. So we start off with an encoder decoder abstractive summarizer of the dialogue history with the goal of summarizing any new pertinent information between a new uh, exchange between the uh, speaking agents, whether it's uh, so if it's in a new session, say we just waited six hours and now we have a new session, and now you're going to train an encoder decoder to summarize that, as well as probably taking in the previous summary as context as well. So if there's any new information that's uh, found, the summarized knowledge will be added to this abstractive summary. So again, this is trained with human annotated data from this multi session chat uh, annotation procedure. So they have this annotated ground truth summarization data set for training these models with supervised learning. So then we have a memory augmented generator that takes the dialogue context and then access to this long term memory summary and generates the next response. So this actually has the same architecture as the RAG FID style models with respect to how you uh, take this sampled summary and then append it at, or prepend it as a prompt sort of for this context for the generator. So it's just a way of structuring the architecture for how you're going to add the uh, summary and the new context and then encode it into the uh, say like a BART generation model or whatever the architecture is with this kind of, it's kind of like a prompting strategy where you add this context, whether it's the context is in this old approach of adding these raw documents compared to adding this 
de this design summary that's been, again, trained with supervised learning. So I think this paper has a really interesting idea behind these memory augmented models and maybe a missing pipeline with these overall information heavy systems. So we usually have these scientific literature mining systems that say do tasks like question answering or fact verification, and they have this first step of returning the documents. So I think this paper raises some really important uh, points about the limits of these just returning the raw text that has been retrieved compared to having some learned summarization model that will help compress this and make it more digestible for the resulting downstream generation model. Then I think another interesting topic about this generally is the difference between dialogue systems and language models. So language modeling data doesn't really have anything like this. This multi-session chat data collection is really unlike anything that you might find from a web scrape of the internet. I can't imagine that you would find something on Reddit where they do have this uh, pushshift.io Reddit data set that they compare with the multi-session chat, but you really have nothing like this where you have these long chat sessions. So I think it's really interesting to think about where the data will come from for building these intelligent assistant uh, systems. You'd imagine this application of having some uh, personal assistant who's super intelligent is going to be a huge application of deep learning, but uh, it's interesting to me to think about where they're going to get their data for this because you wouldn't want your personal uh, data. And that's where we have things like privacy preserving deep learning and federated learning and all these ideas, which will play a huge role in making this kind of application come to life as we need this specialized data where you have the multi-session, the summaries of the chats, these, this kind of thing isn't something that you just find from the internet and do language modeling with. So again, as a recap, this is half of the new changes in the Blenderbot 2.0 improvement to the chatbot system from Facebook AI. This is the idea of uh, taking the dialogue history and then having some kind of memory search where you return something from the memory and add that to the current context for the decoder that's going to respond as well as having this model that updates the long-term memory with the dialogue history. So thank you so much for watching this overview of Beyond Goldfish Memory, Long-Term Open Domain Conversation. I think this raises a really interesting question about the role of abstractive summarization in these uh, document, these uh, query context kind of lookups for looking through these big document indexes with things like face and exactly how that gets returned and appended to the uh, input for the uh, generation model and this overall framework of chatbots and building this data set and then the data differences between these multi-session chat style data sets and then just web scrapes for uh, language modeling. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for the rest of the AI Weekly Update series and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.